Hello, I'm Atuba George. Now we've been talking about God's financial system. And, and I love the way the Spirit of God is guiding us through this. Praise God. Because knowledge is increasing even in me. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we bless you. Thank you today for your revelations coming to us by your Spirit. You're opening up your heart and we are seeing what is in your mind concerning this truth. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because as we learn, we are changed. We are being transformed into the image that you expect us to be. Burdens are being lifted right now. Yokes are being destroyed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. So we're reading, we're talking about God's financial plan. We're reading Matthew chapter 6 and in verse 33. You know, Jesus was talking about, says, don't worry, don't worry, don't, don't, don't worry, don't take thoughts saying, what will I eat, what will I drink, what will I put on, See, where will I live, oh, ah, and I told you yesterday, the desire of those things is not wrong, no, 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 it's not wrong, what is wrong is you seeking or chasing those things why are you doing what you're doing ah i've got to work so hard because by next year i've got to change my car wrong ah i've got to work so hard because <laughs> in a few months time i'll be renewing my rent so i need to raise the money for it so so that's why i'm doing extra time that's why i'm doing this wrong you are doing exactly what jesus said you shouldn't do I know what that means. You are displeasing him. Now you see, that's what he said when Jesus said, you cannot serve God and mammon. So what are you doing when you begin to, now this message is going to hit you real hard. Because you see, if you don't understand to put your heart right, then you will lose your soul. And Jesus said, what shall it profit a man? If he gains the whole world and loses his soul. And by the way, he wasn't talking about making heaven. Losing your soul has nothing to do with heaven. Directly what Jesus was inferring. He wasn't talking about if you get everything in the world and then you don't make heaven. That's not what he was talking about primarily. He was talking about you losing grip of your soul. If you lose grip of your soul, you cannot direct your soul to obey the Lord. See? Now, what do you lose your soul to? You lose it to mammon. Mammon begins to direct the affairs of your life. So you find yourself saying, ah, you don't come home anymore. Yes, because I've got to work. I finished my work from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. I've got to go to my second job from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. before I get home. It's putting a strain on your marriage. Yeah, but, 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 but if I don't work, how are we going to eat? You seen it? See it? If I don't work, how are we going to pay our bills? You see it? So what is driving you working? Mammon. You are serving mammon. Mammon have said to you, you've got to work hard. If not, you will not pay that bill. You said, yes, sir, mammon, I will work hard. And God is talking to you on this other side. You begin to despair eyes the Lord. And you know what makes it worse? You know what makes it worse? You despise the Lord and you serve mammon. And then you now come to slap God on his face by saying, I will pay the tithe from that labor that I'm doing. It's a slap on God's face. You sweat it out there. You are struggling in life. And then you make some money. And then you come and say, hey, God, you know, I brought your tithes. Hey, 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 you know, take. Listen, that's why I was teaching you from the beginning of the year how to pay your tithe right. Because the moment you begin to hear the Lord concerning the tithe, you will begin to hear. See, oh, this is what the voice of God does. 
you don't just hear a voice. He enters into you. When God speaks, his word enters into you. And it begins to make... That's why when God speaks to us, we've, we just get perfect understanding. We know exactly what he's saying. Why? It's not an explanation. It's not a... <laughs> you get what I'm saying? It's, it's an impartation. So he comes right into us. That's why you find Ezekiel say, the spirit said, stand up. And then the spirit entered into me. And he set me on my feet. That's what the word of God does. So the moment you begin to tithe the right way, which is taking your tithe before the Lord Jesus Christ, and, 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 and honoring him with it. And then he telling you what to do with it. And you obeying him. I tell you, your days of serving mammon will be cut short and forever. Oh. You know why? Now, you may be out there struggling and trying to make ends meet. You may right now, in, in all honesty, you may just be serving mammon and despising the Lord. So what do I do? Should I resign from my job? You see, this is where people make the, the mistake. They don't know how to serve God. So you find someone say, oh, Pastor, I'm sorry, oh, I don't have time to be coming for church activities, you know, because of my work. I, I have to be at work in the morning and then and then and then sometimes people say look some of you your work is keeping you away from God now you don't necessarily be kept away have to be kept away from God you see because serving sometimes you may be too busy at work doesn't necessarily mean you are serving mammon are you getting what I'm saying yeah you may be dedicated at your job still doesn't mean you're serving mammon Serving mammon is when mammon dictates to you. So why are you doing what you are doing? For example, you may be on, the only one that observes an equipment at, at work. You have to be there to observe. If not, things will go wrong. So you've got to be dedicated at that duty post. Now you are dedicated. You are always there. And your break time are just few. When a replacement comes for you. So you are dedicated and someone tells you, we don't see you in church. Ah, pastor, I have to be at my side. You cannot let a job that you're doing keep you away from the presence of God. Now, you know that it's blackmail. <laughs> it's good. Of course it's good to be in the midst of believers. That's what the Bible says, do not forsake the guardian of the saints. Yes, but you see, listen. You can be at that place and be fellowshipping with the Lord. Even if nobody's there, maybe you are in, in some, some platform somewhere off the shores. And then you, you are there and doing your thing. And you finish with all that. You see, while you are there, are you fellowshipping with the Lord? It is when you begin to fellowship with the Lord, guess what? that he will begin to direct your affairs. So by the time you come back to meet with other believers, you've, you've grown in knowledge. You've grown in understanding. So you just, you don't come around believers and you're like, mm, brethren, mm, I, I've been away. Oh, please, let me try to catch up. No, you don't try to catch up. You come in and they're actually trying to catch up with you. Praise God. Why? Because why are you there? The Holy Spirit is teaching you. You have time to study the word. You have time to, to fellowship with God and learn new things and no, nothing else is interfering. Because God is there with you. Jesus and the Holy Spirit which you will guide you into all truth. And then you come out on your shine. But when your walk is being done because in your mind you must do that job to make ends meet. Some of you are in jobs like that. You know it's the wrong job for you to be doing. But what do you keep telling yourself? Ah, after this year, I will resign. Let me just enjoy it till the end of this year. And you've been saying that for the past three years. You've not still been able to gather the balls to resign. 
So what's going on? Mammon, you are serving mammon. That's exactly what it is. Now, you, 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 with that kind of mindset, you now bring your tithes and offerings to God. He doesn't accept it. I'm telling you, he doesn't. The first thing he will do is to change your mindset. It's not every offering and tithe that God receives. Not everyone. Some of it, he will, he will only receive it as an act of repentance from you. You understand what I'm saying? So, so he will bring his word to you. Say, you need to repent. And then he says, oh Lord, I'm so sorry. I didn't know this. So Lord, I repent. Then he gives you an instruction on what to do with that money. He says, go give it to Susan. So, and then you obey him. Then he watches to see the repentance before the blessing comes. The way you know that he has received your offerings apart from him telling you what to do, is the blessing that will come with it. The first sign of blessing you're going to see is joy. Uncontrollable joy. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? You know, when you do the will of God, that is the first response from heaven. Joy unspeakable in your heart. Now what does that tell you? Get ready. Something big is coming your way. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's how it works. Something big. Once you sense that joy in your heart, having done the will of God, then something big. Now, let me ask you this question. How many times have you given your tithe and you experienced that joy? You, you, because you just thought, I'm just doing the right thing. I'm just doing what God told. That's why I told you, see, tithe pain is a very special, it's a sacred thing we do. It's sacred. And many believers don't understand it even till now. The church needs to revisit this thing and get the truth of the matter and begin to teach God's children. So when you are struggling out there, trying to make ends meet, you are worshipping mammon, you are serving mammon. And the moment you are serving mammon, you are despising the Lord. That's what you're doing. And you're running helter skelter, gathering up, gathering up, gathering up. And what do you begin to do? Lay up treasure for yourself on earth. And exactly what Jesus said you shouldn't do. Next week, I'm going to be sharing with you on how we lay treasures in heaven. But listen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lots of you have to come out of the service of Mama. And how do you do it? So, so ah, after hearing this message, I'm resigning from my job. You, if you resign from your job, doesn't mean you begin to serve God immediately. Rather, this is the best thing to do. Turn your heart from mammon to the Lord. How? In repentance. If you've been serving mammon like I just described, how do you know you're serving mammon? When what is driving you is what money you're going to make, what, how you're going to meet your needs, how you're going to pay your bills. That's why you are doing the job that you're doing. If that is what is driving you, then you need to come to the Lord in repentance because you're doing exactly what Jesus said you shouldn't do. Do you know the reason? Because God has a financial system that he has already planned. And guess when he planned this system? Before the world began. And guess what's happening today? We all come into that plan and we are supposed to be the beneficiaries of that plan. Now, that's why Jesus is saying this in the first place. Don't worry about these things. Why? Because there is a plan. And that's what he says. He says, when you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things that you seek, how am I going to pay my bills in two months' time? All of it. How am I going to eat? All of it. My children, how are they going to feed? All of it. Oh, their school fees is, is in three months' time. All of it. All these things shall be <laughs> Don't you just like that? <laughs> Praise God. I'll continue tomorrow because my time is up. 
God, listen, the word of God is growing in your heart. And you are seeing yourself transformed. Bye-bye.